Also today, the two remaining survivors of the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre and their legal team announced the next step, step in their fight for reparations. Mackenzie Richmond has those details. This is the first time the two remaining survivors of the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre and their legal team are publicly responding after the Oklahoma Supreme Court dismissed their historic lawsuit on June 12th. Despite the hurdles, the last two survivors, 110-year-old Viola Fletcher and 109-year-old Lessie Benningfield Randall are continuing their fight for reparations. It's been 103 years since the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre destroyed an entire community, burned homes homes and businesses to the ground and killed hundreds. The massacre is deemed one of the worst incidents of racial violence in U.S. history, yet no court has held a trial addressing the massacre and no perpetrator has been held accountable for it. It's been a long fight. At 110 and 109 years old, Mother Fletcher and Mother Randall shared a joint statement saying we are profoundly disappointed in the Oklahoma Supreme Court's decision to reject our lawsuit and are deeply saddened that we may not live long enough to see the state of Oklahoma or the United States of America honestly confront and right the wrongs of one of the darkest days of American history. But they're not giving up. After being dismissed by the state of Oklahoma and Congress, now they are asking the United States Department of Justice and President Joe Biden to intervene and open an investigation into the massacre. They've actually met with President Biden before. The 46th president of the United States of America met with the three last known living survivors. He said these words, and I quote, for much too long, the history of what happened here was told in silence. Only with truth can come healing, justice, and repair. But that isn't enough, the 46th president said. First, we have to see, hear, and give respect to those lost so many years ago, to all the descendants who suffered into this community. The Greenwood community hopes he will stand by those words. Now they wait for a response from the White House. And you can find the full press conference linked to this story on our website. From Greenwood, Mackenzie Richmond, News Channel 8.